be surprised, ladies and gentlemen, that almost 50% of our business is dine-in. The product pull is so strong that it brings consumers to our stores, restaurants. However, you know, if, if your people are not geared to handle that kind of business attitudinally and, and even infrastructurally, there'll be a problem. And over the years, while our same store growth, as you see the numbers there, 25%, our dine-in business has been growing as fast as our delivery business. While everything we focus on is delivery in terms of communication, but dine-in has been growing as fast. The big message here for you is never get overawed by your business model. Call it the Lakshman Rekha or the boundaries it sets. While you are doggedly trying to focus on what your core is, and in our case, the core was delivery, and in your case, it could be something else, but you have to be constantly in a state of flux. So it is almost like an oxymoron where you are stuck on something, but you're also stepping aside like this and telling yourself, is there something else which is telling me that this will work? Now, you may argue here that is that the case where you may start going astray and start doing too many things at the same time, and that's where most businesses end up failing because they try doing too many things. You have to pick up on an insight. The gut which is there in you as an entrepreneur or as a professional will have to you know, override anything else at the end of the day. But don't get bogged down by the bare, minimum, bare business model. That is the thought I would like to leave with you. Please keep questioning the status quo and the model. Globally, this business is probably 80-90% sub-franchised. Some of the largest brands, including McDonald's, which has got 33,000 stores worldwide, Subway, which has got a bit more than that, all are sub-franchised models. We built our 50-100 stores, and uh, there could have been enough uh, reasons and compulsions for us to go the sub-franchising mode, which we can still do. Now, what would that mean? You had to create a model which was sustainable. Every single store costs us today, you know, nearly a crore of rupees. So you had to invest that money, your people were your own. So it would not only put pressure on your capex lines and on your return on investments, which your shareholders ask for, but also in terms of infra of people, you know, almost a factory-like approach. We have 23,000 employees today, our own employees in the whole country. But we worked hard on it, you know, and as a result, how do you ensure that every store is profitable? How does it give payback periods of less than three years? How, you know, your return on capital which, and return on capital employed, which your shareholders and stakeholders asked for, especially now that we have gone public and all that. Debt-free, how you, do you become, and thereby reduce the debt burden from you and fund all capex from within. But the message for you people is, again, challenge the model. If you realize that you have to make a highly profitable business, every store has to generate profit. You can't let some stores make money and some not, and then hope that you, know, you can leverage all your you know, fixed costs and so on, you know, and, and eventually make some money. No, every store has to make profit. Every you know, single iota of extra space has to generate that incremental profit for the company. You got to get it right, the value for money proposition. You have to ensure that it is not putting you in the, in the cheap you know, the cheap product company, because we have today a range from going right from 30, 40 rupees up till 500 gourmet pizzas, you may call them. So how do you bundle all of them together so that you are not perceived as one? Today, if you see over the last four or five years since the launch of this product, we have been consistently getting high same store sales numbers. Pizza Mania contributes to more than double digit, you know, of our total revenue mix. And as we have gone into the hinterland, again, this was all kind of intermeshed. We realize that it is these towns where these door opening products, value for money products are going to be the ones which are kind of going to take us there. So what is the takeout for you? You don't necessarily have to operate as a, as a only value for money player and have the fear that you may get branded as cheap. You can have a, a discrete marketing strategy, product and pricing led, which puts you in a zone where you are seen as value for money at one end, at the same time, something is compensating the whole thing. Some people can actually go that route and play purely on value for money, but there are opportunities where you can create perceptions which are more broad-based as opposed to being just operating in a niche. And so that's where your marketing prowess will come into play. I think whether you are a one-store brand and who's having its market influence only in that neighborhood, neighborhood or in that city or in that area, or you are a national brand like, let's say, you know, what, uh, what Anjan has built or what we have tried to do in our own small, humble ways, 
you got to understand what is the daya what, what is that domain in which you are operating but within that how are you investing constantly behind the brand as i said earlier it gives me immense joy when we get you know when we be, are seen as the most trusted brand and the most preferred brand in the food service space hewitt study great place to work study pronounces as one of the best employers and some of the other things sitting there you know as you can read this is sustainable so never ignore never underestimate the power of your brand and the area of influence you are in you may argue that mere paas to marketing main to advertising nahi karta hu to how will i brand my babe? so when i have at 15 store then maybe i'll advertise and build my brand brands can be built that emotional connect with the consumers can be done around every single store in that neighborhood or in the catchment in which you are you are operating so don't underestimate that mm -hmm.